Okay, we are back. I just want to do another test video here. Um, I'm going to run this thing at full max um, inches per minute at 600 RPM and about a 3,000 depth of cut. So I want to show you how clean this will cut, but the surface finish is not going to be adequate. So um, that's what I'm doing. I have the machine set up now. I just, I just set my Z height. I got my travel dialed in as fast as I can go. Okay, and I don't know how many um, inches per minute that is. Like I said in my last video, I believe the pulley here to this is bigger and um, making everything not the same dimensions as it says on the gearbox. So let's get it going. Um, this thing being so heavy, I'm just gonna help it out. And then, um, so we're cutting now or we're spinning now here. So let's go here. And then if I go like this, we should be chipping. Are so good um, show you for example how fast that handle is spinning you can really see that finish coast to a finish and I don't know if I did I think I did depth of cut decent sorry for zooming in so darn much all right I hate to waste the break on my mill but there we go why not we got to speed this up for YouTube okay so let's turn off the face converter so you guys can actually hear me <clears throat> Now this is a terrible finish, but you can tell that it's really reflective. See the camera shiny right in here. See how shiny we got? Cause we actually took a chip. Let me get right on this, okay? When you take a chip, you don't rub and you're gonna get the clean cut. Now, obviously, listen. I don't know if you can hear that, but if you put a roughness tester on this, I mean, it's not, it's as, it's bad in my opinion. Um, you can see it's not even taken my fingernail. Okay. But that would leak here for sure. Okay. But I would love to have a profilometer one day. I'll have one for the show, okay? And um, let's look right here. You can see that's what it did, okay? A lot of these YouTube channels, they're not gonna get up on this here, on this surface finish stuff. They're gonna do whatever they can to blur out their surface finish. <laughs> um, notice that on Instagram, who's showing it, who's not? But you have to have a pretty high-tech machine to be doing this, guys. Like, we found out a bunch when, when we developed this. One, you almost have to have five axis to be doing this because you need this tilted, okay? Now, boring and decking machines of the 80s and 90s and whatnot, it's built in here to the holder of the fly cutter, but the spindle stays straight 
to my knowledge. I've been studying this, and that's what it seemed to me. Uh, like on a Burko machine, I'm going to actually have to just call them before I... I'm just going to... You put in the comments, but I'm going to call them, and I'll make that the, pretty much the next video on what's going on. But you want... Okay, for instance, if I cut perfectly flat spindle to... Okay, backside's going to drag. Okay, so we have these machine marks this way you're going to come back and you're going to have dumb streaks this way from the back of the tool cutting these high spots technically okay um so little trick for subaru people you ready for this we're gonna do it like this i'm gonna drop my table hold on subaru people can rejoice in the cnc world when they buy the 14 inch because you're gonna feed like this feed it in with your cnc machine perfectly flat no zero to zero on the deck but you're gonna go like this and finish that cut and you're never gonna come back here and drag that tool and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go z up pull the other block over and feed from the other side not this block but that's what you would do and that's what we're trying to set up on our cnc deal so feed from one side pick up don't drag your tool come down feed from the other side and have the snouts of the block facing each other and that way you'll have the patterns the same facing each other and when you deck you will have the same deck height because you're going to be on the same fixture okay that's what we're trying to do in the subaru game is exact same deck heights square to each other so you don't have timing belt walk okay yeah, and there's a lot of ways you can look at it. Do you square off of the bell housing? Do you square off of here? Do you square off the crankshaft center line and deal with twisting and indicating it into what? So you have some, some special dowel pin locating things on Subarus, okay, um, that we can use. But uh, we'll get into all that later. I just wanted to show you guys this. Like, that's full speed. It's a shiny. But I want to get a profilometer on this. Um, I would say, wow, look what it did to that. That pin started moving. We've been hammering it so much, but it did not like that. Let's pull this out. Let's see here. Oh, I can get it out. Bingo. One of our, that's not the pins we use now. This pin I made in, uh, out of just stuff on the lathe. Now I'm thinking of tack welding them before I do this. So something like that can't ever happen. But yeah, that's what we were testing on this is how well, you know, do we want to press this or do we want it barely pressed or do we want to loosen it? Lo like in non-interference fit and then tack weld. Um, I don't know if I can tack weld in that corner in there. I'm zoomed in all the way. I can't go anymore, but I don't know. It could distort the block is what we thought when it got hot, so... Right now, they seem to be good with just a half a thou press, so there's hardly any, and they really stick in there. So, anyways, that is the test on the Performance CBN 14-inch fly cutter. We don't really have a name for it. I'm thinking about calling it the Beast, because she's a beast. Okay, now we have them in aluminum, okay, if you want the Beast light, <laughs> or if you want a 12-inch you know, that can fit in your tool changer that doesn't weigh a ton, 12-inch. Um, and then we have all the shank adapters. So, and they're not as expensive as you thought. Uh, think. We were um, assuming they could be in the four to $500 to custom adapt these. But dad, being an engineer, figured out how to do it with the shell mill adapter. And they're around 100 to 150 So that's not a big deal. This is around $900. Um, but they go lower when you get the aluminum ones, 12 inch. This is just the most expensive one. And then the cartridges, these are around a hundred dollars. Okay. Um, we stock those and then the inserts can be anywhere from 150 to, uh, 180. I'll put links in the description to all this stuff. We, we, this is hot off the press for us. Um, and that's why I'm showing it and I got to get off the the freaking YouTube right now and go run this to the engineering company who's actually going to use it. This is, like I said, I'm not running this in my shop here. I just happen to have it. 
for a minute and I we bought this for the lightweight 12 inch we might have on this machine. I'm gonna try the 12 inch next, obviously. Um, but this is going to the CNC. <clears throat> um, yeah, so play with it while I have it is the situation. The test I had to confirm was when I put both cartridges in and the inserts in and I do a touch off, how many thousands were they off? And the answer was none. I couldn't believe it. Then I put both of them in and touched off. It was like right at that 1,000th mark both times. So I'm excited. Passed that little test. And um, there it is. If you guys want to see it. These are going to be made in the United States. That's the other cool thing. So USA made. USA engineered on all this jazz. But some of it has to get made overseas because it's complex. Um, I believe the cartridge will one day be two versions, a USA and a over an internationally made, <laughs> internationally made um, insert uh, holder. Um, and then there we go. So performance CBN, thank you very, very much for letting me play with this silly tool that I, is worth more than almost my whole milling machine. Um, it does not belong in here, so I'm going to get rid of it and go get the lightweight one. Guys, next on this is surfacing tech bimetal blocks with a four inch cup mill. Bzz, 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 bzz. How square is it? It's going to be way square. Let me able to put it in the middle of the machine. And then I have a profilometer at the CNC shop. Okay. Um, I won't have it here on this in this vicinity, I will be taking this with that, and he's got a profilometer. It's the only one I can find in town. Batteries have been dead on it. It's a, from the 90s, but it's a good one. Um, a uh, Mar, I believe, or something like that. I forgot the name of it. But we'll have that on the channel. And um, like I said, buy metal blocks, Honda Civics, real short uh, deck as far as the other engines go. And then the depth on the sleeve on a Civic is like five and a quarter. And that means most mills, this is five and a half quill, meaning I can bore into this thing all the way to the bottom um, if I have the right Z height. So I'm going to learn that because it's a little bit taller than the Subaru. And then the, you know, plus the boring thing. Um, but to end, to end all that, next videos, I'm going to be facing these with my dad's billet buster uh, face mill. It really is designed for billet blocks, taking like a 2,000 pound block and machining 600 pounds of chips out of it on like a horizontal. But he has one sitting there we can put special inserts in. And we want a four inch to do a down and back tool path type on the um, Civic bimetal block. And I think we can get that surface dialed in way better in a Subaru um, with a 14-inch, obviously. And then they don't have as bad a head gasket issues with the oil drain here always on its side. These things are a little bit more forgiving. So I want to see how, fl how flat end-to-end, -end, you know what I'm reading in the middle, and see if how much of a dome we have on my machine in a Civic with a little four inch. And then I think if we're under one thousandths, I'm going to be what I'll consider myself. I like guess is pretty good to spec, you know, one thousandths. I would love to be dead nuts, but it's, you know, on this, we can always do this. So anyway, talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much for watching and putting up with my long blabbering here today. So subscribe. You will see the CNC stuff next. Um, very, very shortly. So thank you very much, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. My hand is sweating and it's not letting me turn it off. Hmm.